Here's the latest updates on FHA financing. This is one of the most commonly used programs for first time home buyers, simply because FHA or the Federal Housing Administration really designed this loan to be a lot more lenient than your typical conventional Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac type of loan. And I know these words might be going over your head right now, but Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are the two big giant mortgage behemoths that are out there that back conventional mortgages. FHA is insured by the government, so the guidelines and the criteria to get this type of loan is a lot easier. For example, on an FHA loan, you can get approved if your debt to income ratio is over 50% in some scenarios. I've seen some clients go as high as 55% and still get an approval. The general rule of thumb when you're going on a conventional loan, you typically want to be at about 43 to 45%. Sometimes you can go higher than 45, but as a general rule of thumb, that's the number we all look at as mortgage lenders. Now, why are these changes important for you to know? There's three changes that took place in 2023 that I wanna make you aware of. That way, if you're utilizing FHA financing, you know exactly what you're getting into and questions you should be asking or things to stay away from. First and foremost, the biggest change that we've seen in the market, and this isn't necessarily an FHA change. However, it's something that I'm seeing personally throughout the markets that we serve. Back during COVID and as the market ramped up over the last couple of years, many sellers did not want to take FHA financing. The reason is they would look at the fact that you're only putting 3.5% down as a weak buyer. Now, that has nothing to do with anything because if you qualify for the program, you qualify for the program. doesn't matter if you're putting 3.5% down because that's the requirement for the loan and if you meet the requirements and we as a lender are willing to do the financing, then what's the big deal? If you've been following my channel, you know that I've shared some horror stories about agents that I've dealt with that did not want to work with any of our veteran clients because they were putting no money down. So it's these little things that happen out in the marketplace every single day that I want you to be aware of because if someone tells you that an FHA loan is a bad loan, they could be holding you back from becoming a homeowner this year. So if they do that, Make sure that you're out talking to somebody else. Hopefully you're talking to myself and my team so we can help you with your financing. And if you don't know where to start, you can always hit the description below. There's links to more information and even a link to our application so you can get started. But like I mentioned, we're starting to see more sellers accept FHA financing. And why do you suppose that? Well, guess what? Their homes are sitting on the market longer. During COVID, when they had 20, 30, 40 offers on a house, the sellers were as greedy as they came. And this is why when we complain about the housing market, you really have to take a look in the mirror and look at yourself, especially if you were a buyer or a seller in the last few years, because you drove the market up. If you were a seller and you had 50 offers on your house, you were willing to take the highest offer to make the most amount of money. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. But when we complain about the market and you look at how things have transpired, you have to look at all the parties that were involved and the buyers that were willing to pay $100,000, $200,000 above the asking price drove the market up, made everything crazy again, just like it did in 2008. Everyone wanted to be an investor. Everyone wanted to own multiple properties, selling them for insane amounts of money. And then look at what happened. So all of you first time home buyers that are now getting off the fence, this plays to your advantage. The sellers, like I've been talking about, are willing to negotiate. They weren't willing to talk to you a couple of years ago. And like I said, they badmouth our VA clients. They badmouth the FHA clients. They badmouth the clients that were using down payment assistance. But now guess what? You have a voice because the market shifted. So take this time and use this to your advantage. And you know what? Negotiate like crazy because let them have it. The fact that they didn't want to talk to you a few years ago, this is your chance to get back at them and negotiate like crazy and get that deal. So now that FHA is being more accepted, that's a huge plus. Three and a half percent down, you can have as low as a 580 credit score and you can buy a house today. We've got some great down payment assistance programs if you have at least a 600 credit score. There's also some local programs where if you have at least a 640 or a 660 credit score, we can essentially cover all of your down payment to buy your house. And if the sellers are willing to cover your closing costs, you can literally get into a home today, probably less than what it's going to cost you to go and rent another place. 
So this is why home ownership should be at the top of everyone's list right now, especially as we roll into tax season and you might potentially be getting a tax refund. You better be smart with that money. And I hope you're not using it to pay off your credit card bills because you should have been disciplined over Christmas and the holidays like I've asked you to be. So that way you can use this money to catapult yourself going forward. If all you're doing is playing catch up every single year, it's really hard to get ahead. And this is why I really promote home ownership. And I want you guys to get your budget in place so that way you can get into the game before it gets too late. So we're interrupting this video with some updated news. I already shot the previous video, but because FHA recently announced some brand new news regarding their monthly mortgage insurance, I wanted to shoot this video and edit the information in so you have the latest and greatest. Now, what they did was they lowered the monthly mortgage insurance premium. So right now, when you look at qualifying for a mortgage, the monthly mortgage insurance premium that is calculated on all FHA loans is 85 basis points. So if you wanted to take a look at how that scenario played out, Currently on a $400,000 loan, you would take that 400,000 multiplied by 0.85% or 85 basis points would give us $3,400. Now, when you divide $3,400 divided by 12, you get $283 a month in mortgage insurance. Now with the new changes that FHA just dropped today, they are dropping it from 85 basis points to 55 basis points. So now we're gonna take that same scenario, $400,000 times the 55 basis points gives us $2,200. And now divide that by 12 gives us $183.33 or a savings of $100 a month. This is huge because for all of you that are at the higher end of your qualifications and you can't find the property you're looking for, to get another $100 of your buying power back simply with this change, it might help your search become a little easier and expand your criteria just a little bit more. Right now, we've seen interest rates climb back up. So any sort of savings that you can get as a buyer is gonna work to your favor. But remember, just because you have more buying power, that doesn't necessarily mean that you should go spend that money. This is something that's going to take place in the upcoming months. So if you're shopping for a loan and you are using FHA financing, make sure to talk to your loan officer about getting your pre-approval updated because again if you got a little more buying power saved up you might make your search a little easier if not you want to know what options are out there and you know if you've been following my channel i always talk about options and strategy and this is something that is going to be a game changer that will help so many of you get off the fence and become homeowners so reevaluate your pre-approval make sure you understand your options Ask your loan officer about these guideline changes and how it's going to affect you moving forward with your home purchase. So back to the originally shot video. The second big change that was made during the ending portion of 2022 has to do with flood insurance. So if you were to buy a house that was deemed in a flood zone, you would have to go through the National Flood Insurance Program, which was ran by the government. And of course, you had to pay their premiums when it came to having flood insurance. Now they're allowing you to have private flood insurance on your house, so you can essentially shop for that flood insurance coverage. This should make it cheaper for you to obtain that premium, which of course could then lower your overall cost to own your home. And another big change that happened in 2023 is that our loan limits for FHA got increased. So every single year, HUD takes a look at where the housing market is and they make their adjustments based on where Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac is also increasing their loan amounts to. So that way they can better serve people out there that are looking to buy. Now they increased the loan limit. If you're buying a single family home, just a single unit up to $472,030 for one unit. So anything under that, you could technically still use FHA financing. If you're above that, you'd have to look at conventional financing. However, this loan limit is specific to the county that you're looking to purchase in. I'm gonna show you the website to HUD, and also I'm gonna drop the link below. So if you wanna do your own research, if you are looking to relocate anywhere in the country, you can do some research ahead of time to see if the house that you're looking at is gonna fall under the FHA loan limit or if you will have to use conventional financing. Now, the cool thing about FHA financing, which a lot of people don't know, is that you can buy multi-unit homes using FHA loans as long as you're living in one of the units. So this is one of the best things that you can do if you are a first time home buyer or you're looking to buy something you're gonna live in, you can buy a duplex, triplex, or fourplex 
live in one of the units, rent the rest of them out, which would most likely cover your mortgage, if not make you a little bit of cash. And this is how you can literally become an investor overnight. It's that easy. So if you are in certain areas that duplexes, triplexes, or fourplexes would work best for you, here's the loan limits that you have to look out for. But remember, check them out by your county. So a duplex would run us $604,400. A triplex would run us $730,525. And a fourplex will go up to $907,900. Now there's a low cost area and a high cost area. So again, you have to be aware of these numbers, not anything you necessarily need to remember or memorize because your loan officer, when they qualify you, they will be the ones to go over this specifically with you. So you can see here on my screen, I've got the HUD.gov website pulled up. Again, if you want the link to this, check out the description below. Uh, this will give you the direct link so you can do this information yourself. I'm going to start somewhere in Texas. And again, this is by county. So if we wanted to look up in Houston, Texas, which is in Harris County, we would just type in Harris and you want to make sure the limit type says forward because these are forward mortgages. We're not looking at reverse mortgages. That would be an entirely different video, but today we're focusing on these purchases. And again, the year 2023, hit send, and now you will see that in the Houston, Woodland, Sugarland area, a single family, you're looking at $472,030, duplex, $604,400, triplex, $730,525, and a fourplex, $907,900. How cool is that? You can buy almost a million dollar fourplex with only three and a half percent down. This is a great way, like I said, just to get your foot in the door. If I could go back in time and buy my first property, I would have definitely looked at a multi-unit. That way I could have built up some cash flow a lot faster and eventually pay down the house or simply use that to go buy more rental properties. Now let's take a look at another county. Let's look at here in Nevada. Let's look at Clark County. And you can see in Clark County, our single family is slightly higher because remember in Harris County it was about 472. So here in Clark County, you can see we've got 494,500. Our duplex is 633,050, triplex 765,200, and a fourplex 950,950. So you can see there was a slight difference there, but this is why it's so important that when you're looking to relocate, either work with someone that's very familiar with the area, they don't necessarily have to be local to the market. As long as they do good business, they will know all these numbers. If they don't, that's where you get in trouble. So make sure that your loan officer is educated on the fact that you are relocating or where you're looking to buy. So that way they can make sure they have all of this information. But to be honest, most lenders have all this information at their fingertips. So if they did miss it, that'd be pretty bad. So nothing to really worry about. But for you as the buyer, make sure that if you're just not ready to talk to a lender and you're still looking on Zillow or Redfin, you can poke around on this website. You can see it was pretty easy to pull that information up, plug in the county name, the state. And remember, it's a forward mortgage because this is a purchase. We're not talking about reverse mortgages. I may do that in another video for you. But that's three major changes that FHA made. Private flood insurance, which should make your housing payment a little cheaper. Loan limits continue to go up this year. And last but not least, you are seeing FHA become more and more accepted amongst sellers that are out there in the marketplace. So don't let anyone talk you out of the game. Use this information to become a homeowner in today's market. And remember, if you don't know where to start, hit me up, send me an email. I'd be happy to hop on a call with you and point you in the right direction. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.